A United States education is your gateway to a great American campus experience, to study in a country of innovators and entrepreneurs, to use your curiosity wisely, to take on challenges, to think differently, to have endless opportunities, to hear new perspectives, to navigate cultural differences, to pursue your passions to gain real-world experiences, to learn skills for a changing job market, to put theory into practice, to become the kind of professional you want to be, to thrive in your career, to give back to your community and to the world, to be the kind of person that you wouldn't have dreamed to be otherwise. Come study. Come study. Come study. Come study in the United States. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's session. We are very excited to meet you all today here. We are hoping that this session is going to be super important and super relevant to all of you. So today, uh, we are starting the series of webinars that we have uh, prepared for you. And the first topic that we have for you today is one of the main one, because that's the one that you have to start your application with. And that's the researcher options topic. So, um, so yeah, we'll go in details um, about every step you need to consider in the research process. But first of all, I would like to tell you more about the services that we are providing and about Education USA in general. So you need to know that Education USA is providing you transparent and very actual information on the application process and on the steps you need to consider for uh, for, for your application process. And um, actually we have over 430 international student advising centers across more than 175 countries and territories. And um, we, are a dedicated, we are dedicated to promoting US higher education globally. We are providing accurate, comprehensive, and up-to-date information. So in case if you are having any, you need an, um, uh, an advising session or a consultation, you can address uh, to your advisor. Uh, it depends on your, um, uh, on your location. And um, you can search it actually on our educationusa.org website. Um, and you can find more information about the advisors and about the services that I, they are providing. Um, and then about Education USA Virtual, you need to know that we are providing virtual courses for self-preparation for admission. Also there you can find our MOOCs, which are super important also for your application process. Um, in the same time, we are doing online events about the admission process in the USA. And so this week and next week, we are gonna do um, interesting sessions and webinars, which will help you to understand more the application steps you need to consider. Um, okay. So um, also Education USA virtual project, um, you, can, you, have, you need to know that with us, you can apply to US universities from anywhere in the world. And um, we, offer, uh, we offer you student support. We are having here interactive uh, webinars. We also offer you useful resources and materials, informational courses, and uh, you can find here a network. So there are uh, there is a community of like-minded individuals who are also in the preparation for their application process. You can also email us. We do have an email address. And if you need more details about, um, about consultations or advising process, you can also um, write an email and we can offer you there more information. Okay, so for today's, uh, for today's session, as I said, we are starting with the research or um, the research step. 
And in our agenda, uh, we will discuss which have to be your goals for the application process. What institution types are in the US? What are the important factors that you need to consider for your application? The resources you need to inspire from. And also we'll discuss the most frequent questions that we as advisors are getting from our students and are giving us and that those facts are giving us a better perspective and better understanding of what our students are struggling with. Uh, so please write your um, write your questions in the in the comment sections. We are where we'll try to answer them at the end of the presentation, and we will uh, we will explain you in details um, uh, your you know your questions. Um, and I. Our guest speakers is actually me, Alina Yakubova, Education USA advisor, and my colleague Ainash. Uh, she's also an Education USA advisor, and we are we are very happy and excited to share with you the presentation that we have prepared. I'm more than sure that this is going to be super useful. And in case if you have some questions left, as I said and I've mentioned, you can just let them in the comment section. And we'll give you more information about that. Okay, so uh, you need to know that when you are preparing for your application process, there are five steps that you need to consider. We will actually go over each one during these two weeks. So the first session is today and next week we'll having more sessions which are super interesting and will give you more understanding about every step in particular. Uh, and the first one is actually the researcher options. The second one is the financing your studies, then to complete your application, to apply for your student visa, and then to prepare for your departure. But today we're going to touch the first step, the research option step. And um, we're going to go more deep in details, what you need to consider when you are forming, you know, your list for the research. Um, then my colleague Aina will start with with get with giving you more understanding about with what you need to start specifically so thank you alina hi and welcome to our webinar again and uh first of all uh, as alina said uh, researching your university is the first and very crucial and very important step. Uh, you, you understand that university is more than place where you're gonna study. It's a place where you're gonna live for the next five, or four or five years. So there are a lot of things you have to consider before you apply, starting from the cost and the place where university is located, and finishing what you go, whom you're gonna live with, and what you're gonna do during the, your next four or five years. It depends on uh, a lot of factors like, like internal and external. It depends on your choice, uh, on your budget, and so on. So we're gonna discuss these uh, things uh, during our webinar today. Please, next slide. Uh, and uh, during our what we're gonna think of is the first thing you're gonna uh, you have to ask yourself what are you, your goals uh, the goals will determine the university you're gonna choose the goals will determine the place you're gonna live and the go your goals will determine what you're gonna do for the next four or five years the first goals the goals can be subdivided into personal academic and professional your pers personal goals are uh you should consider like uh, what you like to do, what's your hobbies, what your fa favorite thing things. So during your university life, um, not all the things will change in your everyday life. Like if you have hobbies, you should look for these hobbies in your university you're going to choose. If you have things uh, which are crucial for you personally, you have to look for them in your university. Academic goals, like what you want to study and options or specifically uh, majors you, you want to choose. So you should understand if these uh, options are given by the university you're going to choose and if you can choose and if you can change your mind during your studies like uh during the first years you can change your major or university is strict to this and you cannot change your major and professional of course uh, what you're gonna do after you finish your university do you want to um do you want your life to be academically full? Like, do you want to, to make research in your future life? Or do you wor want to go directly to work after you finish university? These things will determine the university you're going to choose. Next slide, please. So selecting 
when selecting universities, what things you have to consider. The first thing is accreditation. Uh, next is type of institution, field of study, co-ed, uh, all women or all men university, cost and location. We're going to uh, talk about all these things during our webinar and we're going to open all these topics in the next slides. Please, next slide. So items to consider. Uh, first of all, you have to consider if it's important for you, the university to be accredited or the top right ranking universities. And here I want to say that accreditation is very important when you choose your university. As accredited in, is uh, accreditation is the approval or the uh, approval that the may, uh, program you're going to study will be approved by other uh, countries or other universities. So uh, I have to say that in the United States, there is no uh, centralized ministry of education or higher education that directly oversees institutions. So all, so all universities um, have an opportunity to go through accreditation process. It means assessing an institution's or program's quality through its compliance with specific standards developed by a consensus of qualified educators and professionals. So when the program and university is accredited, it means that your diploma will be valued not only by this university, which you're going to finish, but by other states, other universities or other countries after you finish your university. Uh, next step is to understand what type of institution you want to choose. Is it, will it be a two or four year institution? Will it be public, private or liberal arts colleges? Uh, you have to choose specific field of your interest uh, while you're applying to this university. And you should understand if this field is very, uh, is top ranked in this university or developed. If your university <clears throat> have this college or, or, um, or just have only program, educational program. So uh, the other thing you have to think of, is it religious affiliation? If you uh, want to uh, have your um, religious back society in the university, you have to consider if it has any kind of uh, religious uh, families uh, uh, studying in this university. Uh, the campus population. Uh, here we can say that it's very important to understand if you want to live in a big city or if you want to live in a small town, very uh, mild life and uh, you want to fix your attention only in education or academic. The next thing is undergraduate or graduate focus. So if you want to study only your undergraduate period, bachelor period in this university, you can uh, choose uh, the university which doesn't give an opportunity to have graduate uh, studies in this type of institution. Or if you want to consider uh, after applying, uh, after finishing undergraduate degree, getting the bachelor's degree, you want to continue your education in this university, you have to consider if they have these programs, the graduate programs in the, in the university you're going to choose. Next, please. Uh, and uh, the first thing I want to stop is uh, in types of institutions is community college. Community college is very popular institution in the United States. So when we say college, we uh, can be a little bit, um, we can have a little misunderstanding between as universities have colleges in their structure, like uh, liberal, uh, like arts colleges or education college. It's the uh, part of the university. It can be a part of public or private university. Community college is the two, uh, the other name of community college is the two year colleges, as they give only two years of education and and um, after finishing community colleges, usually you get the associate degree. Uh, community colleges peculiarities is that they have low tuition, as the community colleges tuition supported by state funding usually. Uh, open admission. So usually community colleges have the year round admissions and they have very flexible admissions requirements. 
the next thing is intensive English po programs. As community college are very socially oriented, they have intensive English programs as for international students and also for the Americans living in the uh, United States. As you understand, some um, people who get a uh, green card or uh, American um, citizenship uh, still don't have enough level of English to study in the university. So the other thing is small class sizes. Usually community colleges have smaller class sizes than public or private universities or four-year institutions. There is academic support. Usually community colleges support a socially oriented institution. They support their students. They give an opportunity to pass examination if you fail this is the, next, the second time. They give an opportunity to withdraw some credit Credits if you understand that you are not doing well in this or that course. The next thing is, as I said, uh, when you finish community college, college, you get an associate degree, degree. So you study two years in community college. This associate degree can be uh, the foundation for your future professional uh, life. And this next thing, it can be a foundation for your bachelor's degree. As you get your two, during your two year associate degree, you get credits, which can be transferred to the four year institution to get bachelor's degree. So we can say that you get during your two years, you get the credits like 120 credits uh, uh, during the associate degree, and you transfer them to the uh, university for your institution and uh, collect uh, the credits which uh, you have to get like 120 and uh, study two years and get the bachelor's degree. Usually community colleges uh, form a system of colleges. The best known community college system is the California community college system. They are, uh, there are more than 100 community colleges in California community college system. And also we want, need to mention that community colleges usually have the partner universities with, with whom they uh, create programs and the, so the credits can be smoothly transferred to the university, four-year institution. The other thing is certificates. In community colleges, you can get different certificates, uh, which are usually career and technical certificates, which can be uh, directly used during your work, which gives you a permission to work uh, to start working uh, while you are studying in community college. But you still have to remember that international students uh, have an opportunity only to work on campus 20 hours during their full-time education. Uh, internships opportunities. In community colleges, usually they have the partner organization or in employers with whom they have the partnership to to send their students to internship and gaining associate degree, as I already said. Next, please. So uh, the best thing for with community college is that you can have the two plus two undergraduate pathway program. So usually community colleges uh, give you an opportunity to study two years and during two, these two years you get your associate degree and get your credits. Uh, you take different courses which can be transferred to the partner university. Uh, usually it's a state public universities uh, and uh, in this state or public university you can uh, get, uh, you can finish your bachelor degree. So it's very um, not effective it's uh, uh, sorry uh it's very useful uh when you think of cost it's co it's cost effectiveness effective for you as you spend less money during your com community college for the cost fee and you can uh, choose the university state university which can be a partner and gives an opportunity of scholarship if you finish this or that community college uh, for example, here it is said that 60 credits can be gained during your community, community college. And you can also get thir uh, 36 credit major and 24 credits uh, minor during your community college study. So 120 credits need to be finished before you go to the bachelor's degree. And you have a time and you can, uh, you can 
choose yourself how you will gain the other 120 credits during your study in this public university, four-year institution. Next, please. Uh, the career opportunities. During the community college study, as I already said, you can get the certificate uh, after finishing the first year and choosing the uh, concrete uh, courses, you get a certificate and can start working according to this certificate. After two years, you get your associate degree. Also, after finishing community college, you can take part in OPT program. OPT it is a 12 months uh, opportunity for international students to work full time in the United States. So it can be 12 months of paid internship or 12 months of unpaid internship of, or 12 months of full time work during your uh, stay in United States after you finish a community college. Employment must be related to your study, to, to your field of study uh, during this OPT and uh, you will be able to work anywhere in the United States. So if you, for example, study in a community college in Minnesota, you can work in Washington DC. If you uh, apply to OPT and get OPT, you can choose uh, your work whenever in other states. Next, please. Okay, I think this one is mine. <laughs> okay, uh, good. So then I will go on with the other types of the institutions. So we know, I think mostly most popular types of institutions among our international students are public university and, uh, and private university types. So um, the public university gives you the option to apply for bachelor, master, PhD degrees. Uh, the entrance options can include pathway programs, intensive English programs and transfer. Uh, the admission and requirements and deadlines vary, but as we know, normally the admission process, not the admission process, but the application proce process would start actually in, uh, in November. Sometimes they have rolling admissions, so you can apply anytime, like also community colleges, which I now mentioned before. The tuition is set by the state uh, and they often have research opportunities. So um, instead for pub private universities, they do offer um, the possibility to study for your bachelor, master, and PhD degree. You can also have the entrance option that include pathway programs. The admission requirements and deadlines do also vary. Instead, the tuitions uh, are set by the board of directors. So they have a budget, which are they are redirecting to a... Um, um, to a specific number of, of scholarships. They also have research opportunities. The tuition fees are higher than for public universities, but instead they provide more scholarships. And that's why our international students tend to apply more for private universities. Um, you should also consider the fact that sometimes, and in many cases, uh, private universities, they have their own platform for application. So as we know, one of the most common one is the common app the common application and all our students they do their application via common app but sometimes private universities they have their own platform so you should know that you need to check if you need to if you need to do that via common app or you need to do that via their own platform um and of course the private universities are those in the ivy league so you know that they are very ranked uh then we have the liberal arts colleges, which not actually a lot of students know the difference. So sometimes they are confusing. They are thinking that those are like art inclined uh, colleges, but actually that's not correct. That's a myth. So uh, the liberal art colleges, they focus on teaching undergraduate courses in liberal arts and sciences. Uh, you do have the option to apply for no major. So um, when you are, if for example, you haven't decided for a major or you haven't decided for a domain that you would really like to to orient yourself but you really want to study in this say you can apply for a liberal art college and in the first two years of study you can choose your major and minor also if you want so that's a great opportunity for those who haven't decided yet for uh, you know for their professional um uh, for their professional side and their professional life. Um, 
actually also uh, liberal arts colleges, they are small in, uh, in terms of overall enrollment and class sizes. Students can choose field if, um, if the majors um, and additional take courses in range of other fields. Uh, so actually you have the option to choose the courses that you really are excited for. So, um, and then you can focus on teaching individual student development and more on the academic side and not on the vocational side like community colleges do. Okay, then we have the next slide and I think that's the one of Aina. She can share us more information here. Thank you very much, Alina. So, uh, as I said, uh, the type of universities were the first thing to consider during your research. The next thing is uh, to consider is location. It's very important for you to understand where you want your university to be set. As, uh, for example, if you like more cold weather, you can choose the university which is set in the north part of America. If you like the hot weather, you can choose your university to be set in the south part of America. So uh, the, the next thing is setting of campus. Uh, it, it, will it be rural area? Will it be suburban or city? If you are fond of living in a city center, if you want to uh, visit different um, mass uh, opportunities uh, and if you want to live in the center of everything you can choose a big city but still you need to remember that the big cities and cities where a lot of people live usually have the higher cost of living and the higher cost for food for example and other things and also you can uh, you, you have to consider that uh, the big cities usually have traffic jams, so you will spend more time to get to your university if you are not choosing to live on campus. As uh, the closer to campus the rooms or the apartments, uh, price will, uh, will be higher than if they are uh, far further from campus. So the next thing you have to consider is the campus size and surrounding areas. For example, some campuses can be set in the city centers, uh, downtowns. The other campuses can be set in the uh, city suburban part. Uh, some campuses are, as we can say, this uh, themselves are or, uh, some kind little small towns. For example, there are universities which are uh, which have two twenty thousand students, and uh, the city where the university is located have, for example, five thousand uh, citizens. So when you choose this kind of university, you should understand that uh, if you want to work on campus, the opportunities will be less than if you choose to work in a big city or in a big campus. The next thing is public transportation. You should always understand that uh, one state in the United States differ from another state. For example, in one state, the public trans transportation can be developed very much, as in Boston, for example, or in New York or other cities. The other small rural areas or small towns or other states can have less developed public transportation. And if you live somewhere in suburban area, you have to have an opportunity to get to the university. So some students buy cars, for example, so you need to spend money to buy a car or and also you need to get your driver's license. The next thing to consider, as I said, the weather. It's very crucial as sometimes uh, students choose university uh, according to the, its ranking and they come for example for, from the country with a very mild and very or very hot weather and the campus itself or the university is set in the cold weather as in Minnesota it's very cold in Minnesota it's uh, usually plus maximum plus 15 uh, degrees during summertime and they have very long winters and students struggle very much uh, during the winters is, is they, they don't uh, like the cold weather. The next thing to consider is living expenses. Uh, 
some um, cities are very expensive you understand uh, if you you should understand that some cities are very expensive in the united states and uh you will have to pay more money for your for renting room or a flat or apartment uh, and next is the nature if you, uh, as i said you're gonna spend in the university the next four or five uh, years and it's the best opportunity to understand yourself like you are uh, in the period of understanding what you will like and set new hobbies and as for nature you should understand what you want to do during your education if you like hiking you should choose the university which is located in the area with where you can hike if you like swimming you should choose the university which is located in the area with you, where you can swim i understand that it's not crucial this things but still uh, when you choose uh, when you start studying and spend more than one year you will understand uh, why it was important next slide please and the next uh, item to consider for yourself during your search is support services in the universities usually give students different support services starting from international office and uh, till the disability service even if you are not um, if you have uh, if everything is okay with your house and you do not have to uh, visit the disability service you should understand that disability services sometimes uh, uh, give their service even for the health condition uh, as in in the united states breaking your leg or arm uh, safeguard but still you will be understand as a temporarily disabled person and the university can give you a service the next thing is international office as international student you should understand how international office is organized and how it works and how it uh, and is it big or and how it uh, contacts with international students as uh, every step of your visa from the visa application to the uh, approval of your visa every year will be done through the international service office and also the opportunities of OPT after you finish your university studies is also done through the international office the next thing you have to consider is academic advising or, tu or tutoring is it developed in the university or not as uh, we come from the different backgrounds and the uh, education system in the United States is very unique. Sometimes students struggle the first half of the year, the first term, term to understand the system of education, how to withdraw the credits or the courses they choose, how to choose the courses, what courses to choose. And the, every, uh, these questions can be answered only by, by academic advisor or tutor in your university. So you should understand if the academic advising center is working well in the university and how it developed. The next thing is career advising center. Uh, we understand that uh, when you study in the United States, the only way to uh, start your work is OPT uh, immediately after you finish university. And sometimes students consider to go back to, you, to their home cities and home countries. But still, the career advising center is very important during your study. Why? Because it not only gives you an opportunity to find the job, after you finish university, but also it gives you an opportunity to find internship during your studies in the university. During the summertime or during the, the winter breaks, these internships can help you in future to apply to the uh, dream work you dream to apply. Uh, it's, it can help you to apply for the graduate course as it can, be, uh, it can fulfill your portfolio. The next thing is the counseling center or medical center, as you understand that you are going leave, you're going to live in the university. So the medical center is very crucial uh, in your uh, consideration, should be in your consideration. Sometimes universities have the medical centers in their 
campuses. Sometimes the universities don't have their own medical centers and students have to go and visit the medical centers in the cities where the university is located. The next thing is housing or residential life. You should consider if your university is giving an opportunity for you to live in a dormitory. For example, some universities have an opportunity to uh, provide uh, dorms only for the first or second year students. Some universities have an opportunity to provide dorms uh, even for the four year, uh, the fourth year student, uh, all four year of your studies in the university. Uh, some universities uh, require you to live on campus for the first year. Some universities don't. Some universities or community colleges don't have the housing or residential uh, uh, dorms uh, in their campuses at all. So uh, these things are very crucial for you to consider during your search. I think the next slide is uh, sl uh, slide is yours. Yes. Okay. So uh, actually, one of the biggest part and also one of the most important part that you need to consider during your research is also the extracurriculars. Sometimes students tend to not really. Um, not really pay a lot of attention to it. their extracurriculars and they uh, remind themselves in their last year before applying that, yes, maybe I can do some volunteering or maybe I can do some um, some public speaking or leadership uh, and I can concentrate more on my soft skills. But you need to, to understand the fact that um, uh, depending on your major or minor or whatever, um, what is going to be your specialty, uh, you need to decide on the uh, extracurricular activities you are doing currently because that makes a better sense for your portfolio, that makes a better sense for your resume, and that will give you a better sense when you are preparing for your application because you will tend to apply for universities which are really fulfilling the interests that you have. So um, one of the extracurricular activities that we are um, that we are mentioning here are the organizations that you are taking part currently. So, for example, um, if you are participating, or if you tend to uh, like more dances, or you like more sports, or uh, I don't know, or any other activity that gives you uh, pleasure and gives you um, you know that mental uh, that mental state. Uh, for peace and for, for enjoying your life, then you need to consider participating in that organization um, as soon as possible before you are applying for this, because then it's going to be much easier for you to integrate in the organization and in the clubs which are in the campus, um, uh, which are on your campus. Then the weekend activities, um, when you are going to describe that in your resume, it will give also the admission committee, admission commission a better sense about uh, the activity that you really like, the hobbies that you are really enjoy. Uh, then also the Greek life, you as if you are interested to apply for a, for a university in the US, you also know that they have this Greek life where they have a bunch of activities for students from different international backgrounds. So they are trying somehow to make a good network of people who would know the culture of different countries. And that gives them that bound, that gives them that network and um, the self-like-minded persons who, who are tending to work for the same purpose. Then also they have student government, they have the on-campus job, as I now mentioned, for every university, for every type of university which you've applied, you need to know that you can have a job, but that will not allow you to work more than 20 hours per, um, per week. You can also have the opportunity to work during the summers, but that's something that you need to decide with the international office that actually... Um, that actually I not mentioned before. So you will have a counselor that would advise you about your visa process. So in case if that expires, I don't know, um, normally the visa is offered for the exact period that you're gonna uh, you're gonna study there. But if you're gonna have some questions about that or some questions related to your job or some about your credits, you can definitely ask your international office about that and your counselor in particular, because everyone is assigned a counselor, guys. So uh, you need to know that <clears throat> when you get at the at the universities in the same day, they 
they will just give you a lot of information. You will participate in a lot of, um, of meetings, in a lot of sessions where they will explain you in details how everything works on the campus and what you need to do, what you need to consider. So pay attention to all those, all those webinars that they are organizing there. Uh, then you have the internship opportunities, which I not actually also mentioned before. So you can do that. Now. You can do them also during the summer. So during your four year study, you can also do them after you finish your uh, your bachelor degree. And you can choose to do a CPT or an OPT. Then the athletics, if you are interested for a sport specifically, then that's a great way to share your um you know your your passion um we do um maybe some someone of you is interested for applying for some athletic scholarships where they are tending to apply for a university which is more inclined to sports that's also a possibility and that's also very crucial because um depending on your results uh it's going to be decided if the scholarship is going to be provided to you or not but that's a sensitive topic and it definitely needs a lot of of advising uh, then the music and theater and bands, we've also mentioned that. Then film, uh, newspaper, radio, magazine, if you are also interested and you have some works that can be related to those activities. For example, you did a website, I don't know, you've wrote an article where you were, uh, you're doing specifically related in your school to a radio station for, uh, for the students in your school. That's also super helpful and super interesting for your resume and also the clubs. Um, what I would also like to mention about the extracurricular is that we are really encouraging our students to, uh, to participate in, not in a lot of events, but in those events and in those activities, which will particularly be related to your personality, because it's not depending on the quantity, it's depending on the quality of those activities. So if you are dedicated, for example, every week, for example, two hours there, two hours in another place, that will give them not a it will give you not a, better, a good description of your profile, I, I, we think, because if the student is really motivated and really dedicated to a specific activity and he dedicates a lot of time to that one, for example, I don't know, to an animal shuttle, let's say, and you are doing that every week for five hours per week or you are doing that every weekend. Uh, and in the same time, I don't know, you are participating in a dance club or you are doing a sport that gives them the sense that you are also really structured and you are also really interested and really disciplined. And, um, and, and th that's super helpful, definitely. And when you look for a college or a university, you will look for something that will have also this activity. Okay, um, and of course the academic. So you need definitely to consider the academic, you need to consider the acceptance rate, the selectivity, things that you can also look for on the uh, on the college board in the Common App. So in case if you want to see the acceptance rate, if you want to see which are the average test scores which are required for a specific university, so you can go, go on that website and you can look for more information there because that information changes every year and they have like different requests everywhere and that's changed. Then the honors program, the study abroad programs, if you participated in different, let's say, campuses where you've participated in summer courses, that's also super important. And in case if you want, like, if you are planning to apply for a, for a college and you have like two or three more years until you go there, it's also a good thing to, um, to apply for some courses like online, virtually or offline, um, that's, that's also possible. Uh, then the distance education, the professor specialization, that's something also need to consider. Sometimes you would really like to collaborate with a professor. So let's say that that's super important um, for those who are applying for their graduate degree because they are looking for a professor before they are applying for a university because that's the person you are first looking for. You will work with him and you are reaching him out or her. And... Uh, explaining what works you've interested are you are interested more and how you would improve that and how you would contribute to the community within um within the process of studying uh then the research opportunities you have also you definitely need to um to research that then the graduation and the placement rate you definitely need to understand that if the graduation rate is super low then you don't have super good chances even though you have a good gpa 
and maybe let's say you have test prep scores super good, then you have, I don't know, a common app, say super good. Uh, you need definitely to rate your power. You need definitely to rate yourself really critical. Sometimes it's good to share that application with someone else. You think that is super, um, uh, is super professional in that. Uh, so, so yeah, really rate yourself when you are, uh, when you are tending to apply for a university and especially considering the fact that all the international students in our countries, they want to apply for financial aid, then that's even more competitive. So yes, please be realistic in the same time, optimistic and realistic. Uh, then also the internships and the cooperative education. So yes, those are definitely facts that you need to consider for your research. Okay, so for uh, for the next slide, I think I'm, I'm gonna ask Aina to, to present. So as for, as Alina already said, from the students of our country, which are applying in the US universities, it's very crucial to think of costs. They always think of the, uh, how much it will be as a whole to study in the United States. So the first thing usually for students and their parents to consider is the uh, the item is to consider is the cost. We can say that the cost can be reduced by the scholarship. You should understand uh, if the university gives you an opportunity to apply for the scholarships. As uh, usually the scholarship scholarships which are... Uh, directed to refer to the international and local students differ you should understand on the website of the university you should you should search if it gives you an opportunity to apply for the scholarship for international students the next thing is uh, to consider if the university you are choosing to apply is need based give the need based aid usually the need based aid is given by uh, by proving your financial st status and the money you have and opportunities you can afford for you to pay during your university studies. So some universities are need blind, some universities give the need based aid, some universities don't consider these opportunities. And always we say you should understand it and you should uh, search for it before you apply on the university website. Next thing is loans and other funding so sources. Uh, low, even in, uh, federal loans are available for international students during their studies in the United States. But here we should say that if you want to ap apply for federal or state loan, you need to find and you need to have the co-signer uh, in this loan, who is the American citizen or ha or green card holder? So uh, this um, opportunity, this way, is not um, is not uh, good for everyone. And you should understand when you take loan, you should uh, you need to pay it back after you finish your university. So the day you finish your university, uh, the loan uh, should be started to pay back paid back. The other funding sources are governmental scholarships or the company scholarships. Uh, there are some governmental scholarships uh, of United States for international students, and it can be searched on the website. Some companies give an opportunity for students to apply for scholarships, but some scholarships are very strict and it has the strict requirements so there are some scholarships which are directed to the students from different countries some scholarships which are directed from the students from different backgrounds social status or even gender uh, for example, very popular, there are popular scholarships for women in STEM so this scholarship gives an opportunity for girls who choose to study STEM during their undergraduate degree and apply for these scholarships. And some companies, uh, uh, for example, Google gives this opportunity. Uh, so what, uh, when we say direct cost, we don't always, uh, we don't say only about the tuition. Direct cost consists of different types of expenses. 
it can be tuition or application costs. When you apply to universities, uh, for example, from Common App, Common App has its own fee to be paid during the application. Even though it has the fee waiver opportunity, some universities don't give an opportunity to fee wa waiver, to waive your fee. Uh, some universities has their own application system, as Alina already said. So you should consider that if they have their own uh, application system, the cost for the application will differ and depend on the university. The next thing is the student fee. Uh, uh, again, uh, the tuition doesn't usually uh, have the student fee inside. Which, what means the student fee? The student fee is the fee that student pays uh, once in a year, and it uh, consists of the fee you're going to pay for the uh, library you're going to use, for the sport or gym you're going to use, for the uh, opportunities the university gives you. Uh, and uh, it's not about the accommodation. The living fee is the next fee you're going to, uh, which is uh, direct, uh, which can be consist as a di considered as direct cost. So when you choose to live on campus, uh, you have to pay for, uh, not uh, month by month, you have to pay for the one term, for the next term. So uh, for the next four or five months, you have to consider it. Uh, when international students come to America, United States, usually they have to have their medical insurance. Uh, some universities provide their own medical insurance and it can be the cost for this medical insurance uh, differs from one university to another. Some universities don't provide medical insurance and you have to apply for the insurance. You have to choose the insurance company yourself. And before you apply to visa, you have to have this insurance uh, approved and paid. So the visa is usually considered when the insurance is already paid. With other documents, you have to have this insurance with you. So in this slide, we wanted to show you the approximate. We say approximate as it differs one year by year. Approximate uh, costs you're going to spend, uh, money you're going to spend during your studies in the United States per year. So next slide. And uh, this slide gives you an understanding of where you can search or uh, decide to guide your search. So there are over 400 universities in the United States. And we understand that you cannot search all these 400 universities. So here we give, uh, try to give you the uh, websites which can be used for you, useful for you during your search. Some websites provide the, uh, the information on scholarships available. Some uh, websites provide you any information about the ranking system and accreditation which universities have. And also it can provide you information about the university life and so on. So you, sh you should always understand that if the, um, for example, scholarship is very, uh advertise in mass media for example if you've seen this scholarship opportunity on the website or in instagram on facebook or facebook you should understand that a lot of students will students will apply to this scholarship and your opportunity to this to get this scholarship uh lowers uh so you should uh search yourself make a, a big um data analysis of the opportunities uh, about the uh, scholarships or the reducing the price of the uh, tuition costs <coughs> the university is giving yourself so um, uh, it's very crucial to have the uh, search skills as we say and always it's important to understand uh, the actual information that you are searching as some websites are uh, giving the very um, how to say uh, not actual information and you cannot uh, you cannot uh, rely on this information during your university search so I think I'm done, Alina. Yes. Next. 
is about. Okay, so we actually chose some popular questions which we are receiving from our advisors, and here we are going to share them with you. We're trying to be uh, quick in answering in case if you are still having some other questions which are not related to those, you can definitely write them in the comment section. So actually, first of the questions that we are definitely receiving for a for a lot of times is how do I structure my research? What methods should I use? Because it seems that there are a lot of things you need to consider and it seems that uh, sometimes that's super confusing and um, it has it has so much it has so much information you need to include in this. So we are definitely recommending creating a list and um, and putting the risks, the pros and the no's for each university. So we've actually ma mentioned before, and you'll have the opportunity to review this session. So you can definitely create your own list with the things you need to consider for every university. We have already given you the resources. You definitely can look on the College Board website for the rankings, for, uh, for the uh, minimum requirements for tests, for, for the acceptance rate, because there is also super clear. And that will give you a better sense about the university that you need to look for. So based on the requirements and based on the things that you are looking for for each university, you can create that list. And that will give you a better sense which is a no and which is a yes. So all those things you need to consider, with, we've already mentioned. You can put them in a list. If you really want a template of that list, you can also email us and we can also share that with you. Maybe that will give you a better sense on how to structure it. So, so yes, definitely you need to, to use a list. Definitely you need to use that template to have a better understanding of what you need to consider. That information should be actual, as I now said, because everything changes year by year. So the information needs to be actual. Okay. Uh, then for um, another question that we also definitely getting for a lot of times is when I need to start my research and what I need to consider when starting this research. So first of all, let's say that um, we have two type of degrees. We have actually three. So we have the undergraduate, the graduate and the PhD. So for all those three types of degrees, the method and the way of researching will be super different because uh, for undergraduate degree, we say that students will have to look for scholarships, they would have to look for different universities. Instead, for the graduate and PhD, you'll start looking for a professor for the university, you'll look for the assistantships they are offering to you uh, or fellowships. So those are different types of things that you should look for. So let's say that for the undergraduate degree, you need to prepare definitely um, like one year in advance if you have a good English, like if you have an advanced English, because then you will not have to prepare also for your English test. If, for example, you struggle with your English, then definitely you will need to prepare to get the advanced level. So you need to be prepared for the test prep, you, uh, for the tests you'll you'll have to do for the standardized test. Also, you need to consider the fact that every it's not anymore optional to have the SAT test. So may, many universities, they came back to having the SAT as mandatory. Uh, you can also view this information on College Board on the on the website of every university you are also interested. So, so yes, you can definitely um, start researching and after that you will have a better sense about when at what what is your status right now where are you right now so so yes if we consider that your English is super good and you are um, you are having all the necessary skills for this application and you feel like you are a good fit for for those universities uh, you can do that one year and invest so we can we can say that you can be when you are 16 or 70 years years old then you can start already with your with your research and your preparation process um okay the next question i think we divided them so i not can answer to this one uh you are muted i think i know you can I think we can. Oh, so it. sorry. Yeah, I can answer this question. Thank you very much, Alina. So the next question is what I have to consider during university search. Uh, we can sum up what we have said today and can say that the admission process is very uh, important. And during before your admissions process, you have to search. And the things you have to consider can be subdivided into four main parts. 
the first thing to focus e focus on your academic first. As we can say, unfortunately or fortunately, the reason you're going to college is to get a good education. So you have to consider what are the required courses for your interested major, what you have to fulfill, how much credits you have for, to fulfill, how much credits you have to fulfill for every term during your studies. So uh, the number of credits is directly uh, directly uh, depends on the money you're gonna pay as you pay for every credit not for the year you are studying in the university uh, the next thing is do the do they have available classes uh, that are interested for you can you choose some courses uh, not uh, which is not depends to your major so which you are interested need in but they are not required for your major can you design your own uh, education plan some universities give you an opportunity to choose courses and design your individual education plan some universities have very fixed and very uh, very fixed uh, curriculum and you cannot choose which courses you're gonna take. They have it fixed for the full year and you have this A course taken in the first term and the B course taken in the second term. And you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, switch them. The next thing is how big is the department you're gonna study and if they have the research opportunity or if they have the internship opportunity. The next thing to consider is the social factors. Uh, the social factors, as I said, is the uh, opportunities you're going to have, as Alina said, the extracurricular working in the uni uh, extracurricular life in the university. The next thing to consider is use numbers, but don't dwell on them, we can say. Use numbers uh, in the website uh, about the retention rate. Uh, use numbers about the diversity how many representatives of different ethnic or religious backgrounds. Uh, the housing, the opportunity of housing is very crucial. If they give you an opportunity to live on campus or you have to search for the apartment to live yourself. Career development opportunities or internship development opportunities. School size and location, as we already said, uh, if you want to live in a big city or if you want to live in a small town. So, uh, again, the next thing is use multiple sources. If you choose your universities, don't believe only one source. Don't use only one website. Yes, university website is the basic for you, but still you need to search different, different other websites which give you an opportunity to apply, for example, for the scholarships, which cannot be provided by university on the university website, but still you're eligible to apply. And um, good luck, and you have to put a hard work during your, your search. So the next question, what is more important, accreditation or university ranking when I choose best fit university? So it's a question which is asked by uh, every third student who is in process of his application. I myself think that accreditation is more important than the ranking. As accreditation gives you an opportunity, give your diploma an opportunity to be approved by other countries and other universities. For example, it's not always your it, it's not it will be always the choice that you are will study your graduate degree in the same university which you finished your undergraduate degree so you choose for example to go to other country to study masters or doctoral program or you go to another state or university to, to study masters or doctoral program so this the program that you have uh, you got during your bachelor's degree should be accredited and approved by accreditation or accreditation organization so uh the university ranking system is very important but still it's very uh subjective as some ranking systems only consider uh the research opportunities that university have some ranking system consider the uh 
employment opportunities that universities but we cannot say that every ranking system will fit your uh, your choice or your goals so the university can be ranked top in top five universities in the united states but according to employment opportunities and you are interested to study stem and be involved in research so in research they can be ranked uh, on the uh, 100 place so the ranking system is not always the uh, system on which you should rely the next one is okay so i think even, one um, so what urgent steps are needed to be done now if i want to start my education in autumn 2025 um so i think that's a super relevant question as i've already mentioned the preparation process to start, should start one year before so you are on the right way um what urgent steps so definitely to rate your english level i think and i consider that this is one of the most important things if your english is not sufficiently good you are not be sufficiently good at your academic writing at creating your um your essay your um your supplementals and in general your preparation for the tests and for every other stuff you need to consider during this application so definitely revise your english level uh, afterwards definitely you need to start with your research because we've already mentioned a lot about the research uh, at the next session we're going to go more deep into the financial aid and to the scholarships which are which are offered by the university. So we will revise in details the possibilities that students can have uh, when, when doing the research. And those would start in the same moment. But at this, at this time, definitely you need to start revising your extracurricular activities, your English level, um, and you need to start researching uh, the universities, the major. You need to revise your resume, your portfolio. If you've already decided for the major, then definitely your extracurricular activities should be somehow related to the major that you also have. Um, and to the activities that if you have some honors or diplomas, which are related to your STEM, for example, if you are applying for computer science or something like that, then definitely you will also need to consider that. So you need to go really deep into, into your research first. Uh, Aina, I don't know if you can also add something. Yeah, I think Alina already uh, answered your question, but, uh, and uh, I agree that the first step is to understand the level of your English and to understand the level of English which is required to apply to this or that university. Some universities give you an opportunity to apply with the level of English, for example, IELTS 6.0, or some other universities give you an opportunity to apply with IELTS score 6.5. And also here we need to mention that some US universities give you an opportunity to choose whether you want to give the certificate test score for IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, the other universities give you only an opportunity to show your TOEFL test scores, so they don't consider IELTS test scores. It's also very crucial, so beforehand you should understand which universities you're going to apply. The next thing is uh, the portfolio. You should uh, start uh, collecting your portfolio beforehand and understand whether you're going to apply to concrete major and or your portfolio essay and statement of purpose should be structured in uh, to apply to direct this major or if you're applying for liberal arts colleges and you have an opportunity to choose your major later on in two years you can think of to be very diverse and uh, have different extracurriculars in your portfolio so i think it's uh, alina have answered your uh, the fifth question and it's uh, i'm also done with it okay good then we have the next question is it true that it is much easier to enroll to a phd program in the use for a free than masters and after phd you automatically get two years of masters that's what my american friend told me i think Oh, I think the I think question so. was, how is it easier and what is making more sense to apply for a PhD or for a master first? Uh, 
So um, I think here we need to specify the fact that definitely there is a difference between the master and the PhD, but we definitely recommend, I think, our students to apply more for PhD if they are so, somehow more prepared for that and their portfolio is also supported um, to their PhD because uh, sometimes that's even, yes, for sure, that's even more easier and sometimes it's making more sense to uh, to apply for, for your PhD degree and not doing the two years master instead. So, uh, so yes, I, I would agree that, that you can definitely apply straight to your PhD, uh, but it depends on, uh, on your portfolio, it depends on your major, it depends on a lot of things, and also on contacting your professor first, on researching the university that you want to apply. It depends also if you want, of course, to be supported financially. So definitely there are a lot of things you need to consider. Uh, Aina, if you want to add also something here. Yeah, I can add uh, of here. I can say that uh, the first thing I want to answer to about the automatically getting your two years of master's degree. Uh, here we can uh, say that you have to understand and consider what for do you need your graduate degree. Master's degrees are usually professionally oriented so they are practice based they are not research based even though you are doing thesis you are doing your master's degree they are practically based they are field work based so when in the united states, states when you get master's degree it means you uh, you want to work in the field after you finish it the next thing is if you are interested in research opportunities if you see yourself in academics in your future life as a professor, giving, uh, doing researches or giving lectures, definitely you should apply to the PhD. Some universities give you an opportunity to uh, apply to PhD degree directly after you finish bachelor degree without master's degree. The other universities or the other programs give you an opportunity to apply to master's degree, uh, finish the first term or the second term and directly apply to PhD degree or transfer to PhD degree. The next thing here I wanted to answer is about the easier way to enroll to PhD program. Uh, we can say that it's not easy to apply to PhD program. Uh, usually, uh, the PhD prog programs are more funded as they are funded by professors' grants that they have. Uh, during their studies or and application process, PhD, future PhD students, uh, additionally to their application, apply for teaching assistant and research, uh, research assistantship programs. So they are usually in the United States, PhD programs are fully funded. So the tuition, the living costs are usually funded by the direct professor whom you're going to work with. Uh, as for master's degree, it's uh, harder to get full tuition, full right tuition, uh, full right scholarship in the master's program as they are not uh, research directed and uh, usually professors at universities don't get uh, don't uh, give an opportunity for master students to be teacher assistants and research uh, assistantships so uh, first of, uh, summing up you have to consider uh, your future goals what for do you need PhD or master's degree the next thing as Alina said you have to consider your financial opportunity if you have an opportunity to study in master's degree and uh, you can get uh, half tuition uh, fee reduced by uh, definite a scholarship you apply to master's degree if you want to have your full right scholarship and want to uh, direct your life to the research or, and academics uh, uh, definitely you need to apply to phd programs okay very good uh, thank you very much for addressing the questions. And uh, in case if you'll have some additional of them, you can also definitely send us an email separately. Um, as I mentioned, our next session will be dedicated to the financial aid part. So uh, if you are now in the process of researching and of preparing, then please join us for the next session, which is going to be on Tuesday. Um, we are very excited. You can share us with, with us before and you can sign up for that event. And uh, 
um, and write your question so we can also definitely uh, answer it there. Thank you very much for joining our today's session and thank you very much, Aina, for, um, for helping me to facilitate this session. I hope it was really uh, useful to, to our viewers and you can definitely watch it after and take specifically the part that it was more relevant to you. Uh, you have a great weekend, guys, and thank you once again. Thank you so much. Bye.